Okay, so let's get started. So we're in class 35 of Bible prophecy about Israel, and we are in the book of Revelation. Some people are surprised to learn that the book of Revelation is prophecy about Israel, but in its majority, that is the truth. Okay, so let's do a review, and we'll start with Colossians 2.8. So, Monica, can you please read Colossians 2.8 in English, please? Beware, beware, lest any man spoil your throw philosophy and vain decide deceit, after deceit. Deceit, deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay, and so help my Portuguese, please. <laughs> and Tende de cuidado para que ninguém vos faça pressa sua por meio de filosofias e vãs sutilezas, segundo a, a tradução dos homens, segundo os rudimentos do mundo e não segundo Cristo. Ok. Any, any suggested improvements or is ok? Uh, only uh, tradições. Uh, uh, tradições? É, tradições. Tradição. <laughs> ok, thank you. <laughs> the rest are perfect. Thank you. So you're too kind. Emily, can you read <laughs> question one, please? Does the new tea look well upon the tradition of men? Okay, and then let's pronounce it because there might be people without the paper. So does the New Testament look well upon the tradition of men? So what do you think? This, this is actually a subject from several classes ago, but I wanted to, to read it for another reason. What do you think? Uh, I think overall not. Correct, no. correct, absolutely right. Because first of all, it, you know, traditions in the Old Testament, <laughs> Well, okay. I think if you look for Bible quotes there, you'll uh, tradition is, is not viewed so poorly. But in the New Testament, it is. And there's a, a total of, I think it's nine quotes. Uh, all of Jesus's quotes about tradition is negative. Um, and Peter, one, his one quote is negative. And with Paul, I think there's three that are positive and one that's negative. But I think Colossians here, it's very clear that along with philosophy and vain deceit, there's the tradition of men can be very troublesome. I want to show you, I just finished reading a book that will help us um, uh, discuss the uh, mystery Babylon uh, in a coming chapter of Revelation. And there's an excellent quotation here. Uh, it's from Vatican II, which was, I think, the 1962 plen plenary session uh, by the Catholic Church in the Vatican. And there they said, so this is official Catholic language. It is clear, therefore, that in the supremely wise arrangement of God, sacred tradition, look what's first, sacred scripture, and the magisterium of the church are so connected and associated that one of them cannot stand without the others. Working together, each in its own way, under the action of the Holy Spirit, they all contribute effectively to the salvation of souls. Um, and so there you are. Uh, the, once again, the Catholic Church seems to contradict the Bible because it loves traditions. Uh, the magisterium, you probably know, that includes the, the Pope, and it's a group of bishops. And when they speak, it is uh, on equal level with the Bible. Uh, and in fact, I don't have the quote here, but some popes have said, in fact, their word supersedes that of the Bible. Okay, so that they they. What they say is more powerful than what the Bible says, which I don't think the Bible agrees with. Okay, so let's go to Monica. Can you read question two, please? Okay. The Bible suggests those who 
truly follow the Lord might receive various crowns in heaven. Do we likely wear these crowns in heaven? Okay, so first of all, the follow the Lord may receive various crowns. So an A and then a Y, you can be sure that's a nice big open A, May. Hello, May. Ju. Hi, Ben. How are you? Good, Hi, and you guys? Excellent. Hi, Monica. Hi, Emily. Hi, Hi Ju. <laughs> yes, she is, okay. <laughs> good, so I hope you didn't rush, Ju. So good, I'm glad to see you. And I'm trying. And actually, we, we started late. It was my fault. I pressed the wrong button. I started a Zoom meeting all by myself. Because I, did, okay. I started a meeting, but not the English Bible <laughs> meeting. Okay, so we're on, on uh, question two. So now then let's go look. Uh, so, so Jude, if you have your, your, your uh, material already up, can you read question two? Yes. The Bible suggests that those who truly follow the Lord may receive various crowns in heaven. Do you likely hear these crowns in heaven? Thank you. Yes. Where? Okay. <laughs> Where? Where? Oh, and then actually, I, ha I asked you to repeat uh, what Monica just read. So my, my, but okay. thank you. Very nice. So what do you think? We're reviewing. Are we going to necessarily wear crowns in heaven? No. Maybe not. We don't know. We don't know. Maybe not. And why maybe not? Well, let's look at Revelation 4.10. Monica, can you read uh, Revelation 4.10, please? The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth, liveth forever and ever. And is their crowns before the throne. Thank you. And cast their crowns before the, the, the throne. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and who has that in Portuguese? Os 24 anciãos prostrar-se-ão diante daquele que se encontra sentado no trono. Adorarão o que vive pelos séculos dos séculos e depositarão as suas Coroas diante do trono proclamando. Okay, thank you. All right, so if the four and twenty elders, and remember, we're not sure sure who they are, but it might be the twelve apostles plus a, a lot of of uh, of uh, Old Testament saints. Um, but if they are casting their crown before the throne, then it sounds like those crowns. The, the crown really belongs to Jesus Christ and, and Father God. So let's let's go now. Uh, Emily, can you read Revelation 12, 1, please? And there appeared a great woman in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Thank you very much. Who has that in Portuguese, please? Viu-se uh, grande sinal no céu. A saber, uma mulher vestida de sol, com a lua debaixo dos pés, e uma coroa de 12 estrelas na cabeça. Ok, thank you. And Emily, can you read question three, please? Who might this woman uh, represent slash be? Ok, thank you. So what do you think? Reviewing what we've looked at last week, there are lots of options. All right, so we have three women here, and we then you can give me lots of, of female options. Mary? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the church? Yeah. Israel. Okay, and why do you call the church a, a woman? Oh, because of the bride and the... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's the church bride, but just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, and who else did you say? Sorry. Uh, and Israel. Okay. Is there a very early woman, too, who is a possibility? Eve, perhaps. Okay. And, and now that we are in Revelation 12, remember we're in the tribulation period. 
you know, given the, uh, on, so who on earth could this woman represent? So it's during the tribulation. So who's still on earth among all those options? Israel. Israel, mm -hmm. right. Okay. And so to be specific, they're often called the remnant, right? Because Jesus and his saints, all of us, will return during the second coming to save the remnant, all right, the, of, of Israel, the, the, the last Jews to survive the horrible, horrible tribulation period, okay? So, so may, maybe they are in the foreground right now. So let's go now. Jude, can you read Revelation 12 too, please? Uh, and she being with a child cried, uh, traveling and birth and pained to be delivered and pained to be delivered be yeah, pain, sorry pain pain, pain, pain yeah pain pained to be delivered okay and that word that actually is the the parallel the synonym to pain is not travel that would be t r a v e l but travail so you can see because of the A and the I, travail, okay? So travailing in birth. So let's go, oh, uh, who, can ha who has that in Portuguese, please? Ela estava grávida e gritava de dor, pois ela estava para dar a luz. Okay, thank you. So let's go to uh, Monica, can you read question four, please? What possible birds are in view here? Okay, so we're reviewing last week. So there's a number here that are, you know, generally speaking, well, what, what possible births are in view here? What else has travailed in birth? Well, the world did, all right, because it, it, it mentions that the world is groaning. We won't go to that verse again, but it groaneth as a woman in birth because of original sin, for the entire world. Uh, also, speaking of, of, uh, of Mary, not, not that, she, you know, that she was in, in great pain because of the birth, but uh, obviously, um, the Messiah's birth was not welcomed. And Herod asked or demanded that all children under two years old be killed uh, in order to avoid the Messiah. And so there was a, uh, a real pain in that delivery. And then finally, and this is a little more, uh, you know, a little more out there, but in a sense, Israel's rebirth has also, uh, ever since Israel was reborn on May 14, 1948, it has been mercilessly attacked nonstop by surrounding Arab nations, by the United Nations, by anti-Semites everywhere who are in the ascendance all around the world. Uh, so here's something else that I mentioned last time. So I think we're now to... Uh, Emily, can you read question five? Where in this verse is an example of the Bible's built-in dictionary? Okay, so how many had heard of the Bible's built-in dictionary before last week? Anyone? That was new. Okay, good. It's a, it's a wonderful concept because now with a pure and preserved Bible in your hands, uh, particularly the King James Bible, you will now see many examples of this. So what do you think? Looking back on Revelation 12.2, well, why did I say there's a built-in di dictionary in that line, in that verse? Uh, because it explains in the last uh, sentence after the coma, what the world word traveling means. Exactly, or last phrase. Okay, so, it's actually, yeah, the sentence is the whole thing that that you're right. That was like a false friend, because if you translate phrase directly in 
from English and say it in Portuguese, it means something else. <laughs> it means sentence, right? <laughs> so there's one that, where it's they're not it's they're they're not the same word, although it's they're very really close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so exactly right. So travailed in birth, you know, travail is a, is a is like more a Bible term. And that's the other thing. A pure and preserved Bible has a Bible language. Can, and, can you explain? I don't understand what uh, Emily says. Um, now you, you ask and I don't understand. Okay, so let, let, let me explain together. Uh, I, uh, and as she said, if you look at the second phrase, all right, between the two commas, it says travailing in birth. Okay. Now, why, why do I say, why do I suggest this is an example of a built-in dictionary? Because then this, the third phrase, the last part of the sentence, explains what travailing in birth is pains mm -hmm. to be delivered. So pain in delivery is the same as travailing in birth. Okay. So what it's doing is it's giving a synonym. So it's telling you what, if you didn't know what travail was before, it's like the Bible says, I'll show you, you have to look before and after a new or difficult word and see if the Bible has already defined it for you. And often it has, okay? okay, which is great news for people learning English uh, who, are, who are reading the King James Bible for the first time. And you go, oh, okay. You just look around and the Bible will tell you. Uh, will, the, the Bible scripture uh, explains and interprets scripture. Okay, you don't need you know, men and professors and, you know, dictionaries and lexicons. No, the Bible mm -hmm. explains itself with the Holy Spirit's help, mm -hmm. but they anticipated this. So it's wonderful news that we have such a smart Bible. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Thank what? you, Amy. Ben, what is a lexicon? Lexicon? No. Okay, a lexicon is... Uh, I'll write it out. Lexicon. Hey, Alexa. <laughs> no. Okay. Lexicon. Uh, and I just finished uh, re uh, reading another book. So just to show you that I, I don't, I take our class seriously and I love reading about the Bible. This one is called Hazardous Materials, Greek and Hebrew uh, Study Dangers. And that's what a lexicon is. It's, it's most often, uh, it is about uh, taking, it's like a Greek dictionary into English or whatever language you're, so, and, and this book is all about, uh, and it's all 1,200 pages about how all lexicons are, are made by secular God-hating men in most part, and you should not believe a word of it. And the lexicons are used by all modern Bibles. Okay, so you, to, to, to make a new Bible translation, you pick up the Greek manuscript that now is approved by, uh, what is it? Uh, Nestle UBS in the 27th edition. Right, they've gotten it wrong 26 times, so they've, they've corrected it now 27 times. And, and then you take, okay, that's the Greek. Well, then what is that Greek word? Oh, you go to the lexicon. Well, the definitions in the lexicon are secular definitions. They're not Bible definitions. So that, that's one reason why every new Bible is a disaster. <laughs> you can tell I have no... I'm not wishy-washy um, uh, in this area. <laughs> okay, so good question. Now here, here, and this is a question where it would be tough to remember, but Ju, can you read question six, please? Oh, sorry, you have to unmute yourself. I'm sorry, there's so much noise here around the night. 
uh, how many how many words does new international version remove compared to the KGB? Okay, so KJB or you can JB. say that. So King James Bible. King James. Uh huh. Okay, so does anyone remember? And remember, this this is a, the NIV or NVI in in Portuguese is the most popular modern Bible, and it, it sells the most in the world. Who's number one? King James Bible. Number two, NIV. But do you remember how many words does the NIV remove? I think around 63,000. Uh, very close. Excellent. 64,000 words. Okay. And 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 you know and then you and we wonder how can it do that? Well, there's many verses in there entirely. There's stories that have removed, but there's many what some would say are repetitions. So I didn't look, but perhaps the built-in dictionary. Well, they, they don't. They, so maybe the NIV says we don't have to say travailing and birth and pain to be delivered. They cut out half of it, perhaps. Okay, so sixty-four thousand words is a lot. Does God? want one word added or subtracted from his bible no no and we won't go to it now that's later but the pen ultimate uh-oh jew <laughs> I, need, I, I need a new bible okay <laughs> absolutely. absolutely okay that revelation the pen ultimate verse in the bible in revelation Chapter 22, 18 tells you exactly what happens if you remove or add words to the Bible, and it's not good. Okay, so let's go to Revelation 12, 4 on the second page. And to uh, Monica, can you read Revelation 12, 4, please? Okay. And his tail drew the, the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready, ready to be delivered, for to the poor, the poor her child, her son, at, at it was born. Okay, so the, the woman, woman which was ready yes. to be delivered, for her to devour. So when there's two syllables, remember it's almost always more open. So it, it's not, not devour, it's devour. And then the two O's also. And so it's soon. Soon. Very good. So who has that in, in Portuguese, please? E a sua cauda levou após si a terça parte das estrelas do céu e lançou-as sobre a terra. E o dragão parou diante da mulher que havia de dar à luz, para que, dando ela à luz, lhe tra traga tragasse, tragasse -se o filho. Ok. Any suggestions? Or that was ok? It was good, it was really oh, thank good. you. <laughs> Too kind. Okay, so question seven, and where are, I think that's you, Emily. Uh, what are some manifestations of devour, devour her child as soon as it was born? Okay, so do you remember from last time, there's a, a big example in, in the Bible about devouring the child or trying to as soon as it was as it was born. Who was that? Herod. Herod, exactly. So Herod tried to kill the Messiah. Uh, and then that was fulfillment of uh, Jeremiah's prophecy. What is another example I gave of trying to devour the child as soon as it was born? I mentioned it just a, a minute ago. Well, attack, uh, do you have to unmute yourself? Hi, everybody. 
Hello, Tiago. Hello, Tiago. Oh, sorry, I'm too late, my friends. No, ne <laughs> ne <laughs> never too late. We started late, so so glad, delighted you're with us. And actually, mm -hmm. Daniel's joining us right now as well. So, Ju, what were you gonna say? Um, the, the pharaoh, when the pharaoh uh, send uh, no uh, no Jesus, but uh, is I don't know if it has some relation uh, if the. Old Testament, if New Testament, when Pharaoh uh, asked for uh, kill all the the, the borns, the first born, the, absolutely right. Yeah, but Moses escaped. Yeah, right. yeah. Welcome, Danielle. Good to see you, and and uh, we get to see you now with video. Yeah. <laughs> right. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, that's another good example. And the other, oh, we're on question seven on the second page, okay, for Danielle and, and Tiago to, to uh, join us quickly where we're at. And we just are answering, what are some manifestations of devour her child as soon as it was born? And we've mentioned Herod, uh, uh, may, all those firstborns in Egypt, uh, and then also Israel in 19. Born in 1948, or reborn, and at the day after, immediately attacked by four Arab nations. Okay, so let's go to Revelation 12, 6. And so, oh, Daniel, uh, can you read Revelation 12, 6, please? And the woman fled into the whiteness where she uh, of a place the spirit of God that they should feed her dear at the sand to hundred and three score days. Okay, very good. A couple of longer words, and longer words are always more challenging, into the wilderness. Okay, so it, it's understood that wild by itself, but in this case, it's wilderness, which is easier to say than wilderness, I guess. Remember, English is irregular sometimes. And the other is there a thousand two hundred. So, and that's just the emphasis in English is obviously closer to the head of the word. So very good. Who has that in Portuguese, please? A mulher fugiu para. Pode ver. A mulher a mulher fugiu para o deserto para um lugar que lhe havia sido preparado por Deus, para que ali a sustentassem durante 1260 dias. Ok, thank you. So, let's go to question 8, and that would be, Tiago, can you read question 8, please? So, Sorry, Ben, uh, uh, H? No, question 8. At the top of page two, just after Revelation 12, 6. Who is the woman here? It starts with, who is the woman here? Uh, Revelation 12, 6? Uh, it's the question just below that, question eight. Ah, okay, thank you. Who is the woman here? Uh, fleeing from what or Rome? And two were. That second part is what or who? Whom? Yeah, it's like it's like the word who, but who is uh, what's it called? It's it's in it's it's uh, it's direct. I forget the exact word. Whereas whom is then referring with the m at the end. It's it's telling you that this is something on which an action has occurred. So to whom? Um, okay, thank you. Gladly. All right. So what do you think? So here we have this woman, and we've all had all these, these uh, possibilities about who the woman here is in this part of Revelation 12. But now she's fleeing into the wilderness. So who do you think this is? The remnant. The remnant, exactly. And so fleeing from what? So the... Antichrist, maybe. A absolutely right. And to where? 
Eighteen mountains. Exactly right. Very good, Emily. Every single one. It says wilderness, but then we'll see in the next verse. So we're just finishing up the review of last week. Uh, so back to Monica. Can you read Matthew 24, 15 to 16, please? When he therefore shall the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, the prophet stand in the holy place, whose host read it, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Okay, very good. And who has that in Portuguese, please? Quando pois dir diz que a abominação da desolação de que de que falou a o profeta Daniel está no lugar santo quem lê entenda então os que estiveram na Judeia fujam para os montes Okay, so uh, uh, Emily said exactly right. They're fleeing into the mountains. And then let's just read uh, our last part of the review, 2 Thessalonians 2.4. Emily, can you please read that for us? Who opposeth and exalteth, exalteth himself above, above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing, show, shewing himself that he is God. And this is just a slightly older uh, spelling for showing. And I've, I've been told you can actually, it's pronounced showing. You're, but you're right. If you were to do a literal, it would be shooing, but that doesn't really exist. So showing. Showing. Very good. Who has that in Portuguese, please? O qual se opõe e se levanta contra tudo que se chama Deus. Ou é objeto de culto a ponto de assentar-se no santuário de Deus ostentando-se como se fosse o próprio Deus. Ok, so last time we looked at Daniel 9, which reflected the very words in Matthew of abomination of desolation. But I just wanted to show you 2 Thessalonians 2.4 because this makes it very clear. Uh, who is this verse talking about? Satan. I... Exactly, or, but really uh, the, Antichrist. the Antichrist. And uh, at this point, you can say, yes, he has become completely energized by or indwelt by Satan, because now he is calling himself God uh, and sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And when that happens, what, what do the Jews do? They wake up. <laughs> they have been they've been worshiping him as the Messiah up until this point, and they finally wake up and they realize we made a huge mistake and they flee. Remember that it's if you're like if you're on top of your roof, don't even go down inside and get your clothes. Like flee to the mountains now. Okay, so let's take a look at the war in heaven together. A lot of war is going on, but hey. This is, this is tribulation. So, you know, it's not all uh, uh, little baby cats and roses, right? So it's a little bit violent and bloody and gory, but then, hey, that's Satan. Uh, and who's the god of this world right now? Satan. Okay, so let's go to Revelation 12, 7. So, Ju, can you read Revelation 12, 7, please? Yes, and there was war in heaven. Uh, Michael and his angels fought, fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Okay, so wow, something is going on. Who would ever think there could be a war in heaven? So who has that in Portuguese, please? Ouvi. Ouvi. Vai, vai. Não, não, não. 
Uh, houve peleja no céu, Miguel e seus anjos pelejaram contra o dragão. Também pelejaram o dragão e seus anjos. Ok, so, thank you. So, the next, uh, Daniel, can you read question A, please? Is spiritual warfare limited to the earth? Okay, thank you. Very well read. What do you think? Easy question. Nope, doesn't sound like it. Okay, so let's go to uh, uh, Tiago. Can you read Revelation 12, 9, please? Of course. And the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, good news. Thank uh, one, one pronunciation correction, which deceiveth the whole world. So, and, uh, so the WH is, is really pronounced, whole. yeah, just like an H almost. Really no difference, whole world. Very good. Thank you. With pleasure. Who has that in Portuguese, please? E foi expulso o grande dragão. Não. É o nove, né? E foi expulso o grande dragão, a antiga serpente, que se chama Diabo e Satanás, o sedutor de todo mundo. Sim, foi atirado para a terra e com ele os seus anjos. Ok. Thank you. Uh, and remember, so this, this is the verse where... If we had any doubt who the dragon was in Revelation chapter 11, it's now clear. It says who this was. So let's see. So Tiago just read. So uh, Monica, can you read question B, please? What is at the earth, heart of Satan's deception of the world war? Okay, very good. And you, you, you pronounce whole correctly. Very good. So what do you think? What is at the heart of Satan's deception of the whole world? I can think of two areas at the heart of Satan's deception. Pride? Say it again, sorry. Uh, pride? Uh, um... that, that, that's, that explains his uh, own fall. Absolutely correct. All right, so Satan fell or Lucifer fell because of pride. But what, what is the heart of how he deceives us? Lies? No. Yeah, why he deceives us or, or, or how? Well, if you remember, what was, what was Satan's first words in the Bible? Where did he speak? It was before Job. Oh, it was all the way back in Genesis. It was Genesis 3. Oh, to be like God. Uh, that's that's uh, absolutely right. But the very first on Genesis 3, 1 is serp the serpent to Eve uh, says, uh, hast, what is it? Uh, hast, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, misremembering, but it's a very important one. I'll find it just a second get the King James exactly right. It is, oh, wrong one. Uh, it's hast thou said, ask God. I'm almost there, sorry. There we go. And he asked, yea, hath God said to Eve? So what is he doing? He's doubting God's word. Okay, so it's good. To, this is the very top of Satan's strategy on how to deceive the entire world is to start by getting the world to, to doubt God's word. And, and this has remained his first strategy, his top strategy. And I would argue 
that why uh, are there new Bibles every year? To sow confusion and make people doubt the word. It's, not, it's no longer the Bible is the word of God, it's the word of men. They, they come out with a new copyrighted Bible, they change the words every single year, uh, and all of that is to sow confusion and doubt that there actually is the word of God that we can read directly. Uh, and then Emily said the second one, all right, which is right there as well, but it's aspire to be as gods, right? So, so, and we know that from Genesis 3 as well. So it's not only doubt God's word, it's, hey, guys, you want to be, you can doubt his word, and then you can be like him. <laughs> Crazy. But people believe it every day. <laughs> okay, so let's look. And then here, you're going to like this, Emily. Look at question C. So, Monica, okay, you get to read question C, Emily. Uh, what modern theory sums up this deception perfectly? Okay, what do you think I'm getting at? So there's a modern theory that is just, it's Satan's best creation of all time. Uh, you know, Mystery Babylon, who we're going to talk about, he's a pretty good creation. And that whole religious system that Mystery Babylon represents. But boy, this is the modern theory. Satan was really smart on this one. What do you think? Evolution. Absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because evolution, what do you think? Uh, do you think uh, evolution made people believe more in their Bible? Made them believe that, that the flood is history, that uh, creation was in six days with one day of resting. Did it, uh, <laughs> no, evolution is specifically, it's a first, it's an outright attack on God's word. And it's a successful attack. Every school in the universe, except ones that are, that are uh, God-oriented, teach evolution also. say it again i said uh, the big bang also absolutely absolutely that's that's their their funny impossible theory on how things started uh because the big bang if if, if everything started the size of of this pencil tip which is what they say and there was so much energy that it was like a big bang on and a big bang, the idea is that it's in a, in a huge explosion, right? If the energy has been packed into the top of this pencil tip, for, it's big explosion. I mean, that was a big, not just a big bang, it's like big, 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 a huge bang. And the temperature is extremely high with all that energy. Does life, can life live inside extremely high temperatures? Not for a second. So how could life start from, no, the Big Bang would have, if there's any life at all in the, in the tip of my uh, pencil here, it would have been destroyed a million times over by the Big Bang. So anyway, all right. So, uh, and then aspire, why do I say uh, evolution is also aspire to be as gods? What do you think? Well, how does, does evolution do that or not? It may not say it outright, but it sure does. If we are evolving and you're like great, 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 great grandfather is a little amoeba glob in a primordial soup, and then it's turned into a little like salamander tadpole that climbed out of the pool and then put out its legs and then turned into a lizard and then did it. And then it was a chimpanzee eventually, and the chimpanzee started to stand upright. It's, I mean, it's too funny to be true, but guess what? Billions of people believe it. Well, if, do you think if, we're all, if we evolve that far, are we, are we no longer evolving anymore? No. What's the next step? We are humans who are evolving into what? God. <laughs> That's the idea. 
<laughs> okay, so the, the evolution books don't, you know, in school say, hey, you're evolving and next stop, God stop. They don't say it, but it's clear. And then what is new age? Well, there's, there's so many then uh, cult religions that talk about having God in, they're very pagan, that you have, there's God inside everything, including all of us. And we're not talking about the Holy Spirit. We're saying that God, the God that's within you, the Christ that's within you, all right? So the God within. And that's all that, that uh, Satan was trying to help out Eve to let her nice little goddess inside come out. <laughs> so anyway, I'll, I'll stop talking about evolution. All right, so let's go. So Ju, can you read question D, please? Yes. Um, weren't certain angels cast out back in Genesis? Okay, thank you. So weren't. So were not. Weren't Satan's angels. Were, weren't. Okay. So what's up here? All right. We just saw in Revelation 12, 9 that the great dragon and, uh, was cast out and all of his angels were cast out with him. What is this? Okay, so we know that they were cast out earlier, right? That's the, so the fallen angels came down. And because we know that the fallen angels loved earth women too much, all right, and had mighty men or giants by them. But then what do you think this casting out is? Well, uh, can, does Satan have access to God right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. In fact, we'll see. He is accusing uh, you, me, all of us all the time. All right. We do something a little bit wrong. He's like, look at that. All right. So this seems to imply that what happens at this point, remember, we're, we're coming, we're only perhaps three and a half years away from the second coming, from the beginning of the millennium. Satan, he blew it. He lost the war in heaven. He now is cast out permanently. He never gets to go back up and say anything to God. He's out. He's, you remember uh, the, the famous TV show? It's like Donald Trump saying, you're fired. <laughs> okay, God and, and Jesus Christ are saying to Satan, you're fired. You're no, don't come before me anymore. Okay, so let's let's go to Revelation 12, 10, and that is Jew. No, Jew just read. So Daniel, can you read Revelation 12, 10? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of the, his Christ for the accuser of the Bethlehem and cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Okay, very good. A couple of pronunciation suggestions. So loud voice saying in heaven. And then the second to last is brethren. Heaven and brethren. And, and brethren is really like brother. Okay, so it's brothers. Now, since we started a little bit late and some yeah. people have... Sorry. Uh, uh, so, so we're gonna. You, and you all are such good Bible and English students. We're we're gonna stop reading the Portuguese, so we can we can try to finish up not too late, okay? But if you don't, if you have a question on any English word, then ask me. So now we have. And I heard a vo a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kin kingdom of, of, of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. So let's go to question E. Tiago, can you read question E, please? Give examples of when Satan accused the Bithrin in front of God. A brethren. So it's not a very common yeah. word, brethren, which means brotherhood or all of us. All right, so 
Who knows from their, your vast Bible knowledge, when are there specific examples of Satan accusing us, accusing the brethren in front of God? As the church or? Do... Well, no, the brethren is, is in everyone. Yeah, so all, over all history. So all God believers. Job? Absolutely right. So that's that's the first big one where we know that there's like a long extended conversation between Satan and God about Job. So that's excellent. Okay, any other thoughts? Any other uh, famous people in the Bible who were accused directly by Satan? We have examples in the next verses. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to Joshua, and then uh, the second verse is about who? who's Simon? Which Simon is this? We'll, we'll get to Luke. Well, let's read it. So Zechariah 3, 1 to 2a, we're back to Monica. Can you read Zechariah 3, 1 to 2a, please? Okay. And he... She read, she read, showed, me. yeah, you can say showed, 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 me. showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke the oh satan very well read okay so there's there's joshua uh who's getting beat down by satan so let's go now emily can you read luke twenty two thirty one? and the lord said simon simon behold satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat okay so who who is this simon peter absolutely right so this is simon peter uh, and then actually the next line is going to talk about, uh, okay, this is bad news. So let's jump to Emily. So Ju, can you read the next verse? First Peter 5, 8. Me? Yes, please. <laughs> be sober, be uh, vigilant, vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion walk about, seeking one he may devour. Okay, so adversary. So the emphasis at the very at very beginning there, and then seeking uh, whom? Ad adversary. Absolutely right, adversary. Adversary. And, and then seeking whom he may devour. Whom? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is and and Peter is talking to who? To all of us. So let's look at look at question F. So Daniel, can you read question F, please? Uh, can Satan devour devour true believers? What do you think? <laughs> Only if they turn back to come to God. Sorry. Only uh, the believers that committed the uh, unforgivable sin, maybe. Well, that it's a very it, it's one of those uh, 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 delicate issues in the Bible. But I did say devour true believers. Oh, okay. Okay. So false believers, he devours them all the day, all the time, no problem. <laughs> and we're going to see why he, true believers are out of reach. Satan has no access or control to us. So Job was an exception. Let me put it this way. Uh, uh, if we go through tribulations, God knows about it. So nothing happens to true believers unless God allows it to happen. So, and he does not allow us to be completely devoured. So let's go to uh, uh, Tiago. Can you read uh, James 4, 7? One of my favorite Bible verses. 
Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Okay. James is pretty straightforward here, guys. As long as you submit yourselves to God, you are a born-again Christian. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. All right? If you don't resist the devil, you're going to have problems, right? Uh, you won't be uh, uh, taken away by the devil, but you're going to have real problems in your life. Uh, so let's go now to Monica. Can you read John 10, 28? And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Very good. Uh, and then it's the, the negative there is neither, neither shall any. Neither. Yeah, you, you join uh, Tiago in his British training by saying neither, neither, neither. There's, there's, a, there's a more British pronunciation. Neither, but neither. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I always have a little bit of fun with Tiago because he went to a British English school. Um, wow. I, I was a, a, a child. <laughs> you're not shy, but poor Tiago, he's been studying English with me so long, he has lost his British accent. Lord of God. <laughs> thank God, thank God. Okay, so what is John telling us here? First of all, I give unto them, and wait a sec, who's speaking here? Jesus. Okay, so first of all, he says he gives eternal life. Well, does eternal mean eternal? I think so. So if he gave you eternal life, can you lose eternal life? It's not eternal then, right? So once you receive eternal life, boom, you are born again in spirit. You are now a new creature. You have eternal life, period. You don't, you know, go through a, a probation period. You don't have to go to purgatory. You don't have to know. You have been given as a free gift eternal life because eternal means eternal. And then he says, they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, substitute for man, any angel, any fallen angel, Satan, no one, nothing can pluck them out of my hand. So once you are Jesus's, you are always Jesus's. Okay, if you if you if you if you uh, continue in sin for too long, when you are Jesus, when you are uh, you know in His hand, part of His family, He may decide to remove you. Uh, Ananias, I forget the name of the other. Remember the 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 born again Christians who deceived about how much money they gave the church. They sold their homes and they exa they exaggerated the amount. This was at a time in the early church where it was like we can't no you can't be deceiving anyone in such an important. You can't be pride filled and offer that you you gave everything from your home sale or proceeds when you only gave doesn't matter you gave three quarters you gave half and they were removed because they you we can we will not be allowed to bring shame on jesus's name for too long okay so yes we can be removed but satan not by Satan, by Jesus Christ himself. Okay, that's, that's at least what I believe, and I think that that is so hopeful. Okay, I don't want to be removed, so I'm gonna, I want to stay very much submitting myself to God and, and doing all that I can to please Jesus Christ, but also I know there's nothing I can do to lose my salvation. Nothing. I did nothing to gain it, 
and I can do nothing to lose it. I am his, thank God. Okay, so let's go to Emily for, to read Revelation 12, 11, and we'll finish up soon. Uh, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Okay, so here we are. We just were talking about, uh, remember in Revelation 12, 10, where it's, uh, we were talking about, uh, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, and that the, uh, uh, and now, now uh, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. So this is now the war in heaven and that Satan has lost. And then we move focus here on Revelation 12, 11, and it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Well, who do you think they is now? Who are we talking about? And they overcame him. Well, maybe it's easier to start there. Overcoming whom? So the idea of overcoming is you have a challenge, you, you're, you have a problem, and you overcome. So who is attacking? Satan. Satan, absolutely. So, and then who is overcoming Satan? By the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. That sounds like they're martyrs. So who would this be? We're in tribulation. I think the, the war in heaven is no longer in picture. We're now back on earth. So these are the tribulation saints. Okay, so remember, tribulation saints are people in the during the tribulation, not the 144,000 sealed, because they cannot be touched. But anyone else who confesses Jesus Christ is his Savior and Lord, if they are captured, will be killed. And so, and those are the tribulation saints, all right? So they, so this is saying, okay, they love not their lives unto the death. So they're, they're, they were able to overcome Satan, uh, testify, so by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives so much because most of them are immediately killed. Okay, so then the final verse let's look at is, uh, Jude, can you read Revelation 12, 12? Therefore, rejoice ye, ye heavens, and ye that, that dwell in them, who to the inhabitants, habitants, of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down into heaven great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Okay, thank you. Very good. Remember that that, that slightly strange uh, Bible word that's spelled Y E, and remember happy. So it's it's ye, not yea. And they yeah. just, you know, normally you would look at that and you go, it looks like it's yay, but that's, that's it, English is irregular and this is a happy Bible word. So it's, it's ye heavens. And there's also the beginning of the second uh, sentence. It's woe to the inhabitants. It's a woe. It's one of those words that sounds like uh, what, it, what it means, like woe, watch out, be careful, woe. To the inhabitants. Okay, so uh, so remember, D Satan has just lost his final battle, or the war in heaven. He has been cast down, never to return to heaven again. Praise the Lord. Uh, but there is a problem. People on the earth now have the devil twenty four seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay he's no longer up you know uh speaking poorly of the br brethren or anyone in heaven doing making mischief in heaven he is now 
with great wrath really doing horrible things on earth during tribulation. And, and it says at the end, he asked but a short time. Well, why is that? So Daniel, can you read question H, please? Uh, how short is his time? Okay. And, and, and this is interesting that the devil, he knows. He, he has a short, but a short time. You know, sometimes it's funny. It's like the devil knows the Bible and sometimes he doesn't know the Bible. He still thinks he can win. He still thinks that he is, uh, he was created maybe during the Big Bang, <laughs> right? And, and so he's, he's like a co-equal with God, all right? So he believes that he's read the Bible, but it's sometimes he's like, uh, you know, <laughs> like completely forgets it or, you know, he's still surprised. I don't know. But here he seems to actually know that his time is short. How short is his time? Seven years. Okay. And but where do you think we are in the tribulation period? Remember, we, we kind of believe that when the Antichrist sits on the mercy seat, and the abomination of desolation occurs, when does that occur? Three and a half. Yeah, so. exactly. So nothing's very certain in, in eschatology, all right, the study of the end times, and particularly in the book of Revelation. Uh, but it's, it, from the sound of it, the devil ha definitely has less than three and a half years. And so given how close we are to the rapture, the devil has little time left. But I'll tell you, he's working hard these past uh, 12, 13 months. He's on overdrive, right? Because his time is short. So he is making advances everywhere. All right. So, but hey, that's bad news for the unsaved. It's kind of good news for us i it's kind of tough i don't like to think of it that way but time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter okay until we will never cry again so thank you we went long tonight any questions or comments All right, I, I'm looking forward to never crying again. How about you guys? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, because there will also be nothing to cry about. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? I, I, I probably, I, I want to cry for, uh, for joy. <laughs> yes, there you go. Okay, <laughs> crying for joy is absolutely okay. That's a different kind of crying, I think. That's, uh, those are happy tears. Okay. But anyway, uh, I almost cry for joy when I see all of you here. So thank you. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Bye. Any other questions, comments? You're all good. Okay. We can talk someday uh, more about if I don't know if everybody would like to, but about evolution. I think it's such an interesting topic. Okay. Yeah, you know, we, we uh, uh, Chiago participated. We, we did a, a, an English class or a semester uh, on evolution. And it's, it's a big subject, but what, uh, uh, and that involved then like how many classes? Maybe it was like 10 classes to really talk through evolution. But what I'll do at least, Emily, is that I'll, I'll emphasize wherever it comes up you know, in the verses we're looking at, and we'll see. Uh, I've already, I already uh, sent you to, I think I did those two uh, discussions in my Bible study here in Miami Beach in English on evolution. You're so nice. Oh, thank you. So, but, they, <laughs> but they're very, and that, but that is very complicated English, and it was like a lot of material, like bam, 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 bam. bam. But, uh, but uh, thank you for that interest. But uh, I'm so glad you like that. And it's so important. It, yeah. it, it is, is one of, of Satan's favorite tools. 
and he did an incredible job with it. Because pretty much, pretty much, if you think of it, since evolution, which started before Charles Darwin, but let's say Charles Darwin, 1853, I think it was, Origin of Species, since then, uh, uh, God's word has been pushed aside. Because then the leaders of society started to believe in science falsely so-called, all right, as it's said in, in Romans, as Paul says in Romans, falsely so-called. And ever since then, so evolution has grown, 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 and the place for God's word in society and schools, until now in public schools, the Bible does not enter at all. It's the only holy book. You can study the Quran, you can study uh, you know, Confu Confucian stings, but no, the Bible is too dangerous and hate-filled and it does not enter the schools anymore. And evolution pushed it all away. So, boy, I, you know, uh, Satan is one smart guy uh, and for some reason, we, uh, so many of us never learn, um, but not here, because when we are born again, we are then able to uh, understand the spiritual with spiritual eyes. And that's why the Bible is so difficult for so many people, because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's confusing. Okay, so there you are, but evolution is a big topic, and we'll try to, to uh, discuss it a little more in future classes, okay? Thank you. Uh, ben, yes. I'm not, I'm not sure if you, you, if you share uh, on Facebook the, um, someone, I think, is a journalist, ask for uh, a science about God and about the the evolution and I don't know it is not you uh I don't think so but uh, let, let me know are, are you on Facebook too yeah on Facebook okay. it's a, sh a short answer but it's so I I don't I don't know if I don't I don't know if explain the 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 answer but is I I I don't know if I I think now is I I'm thinking uh is you you share, but maybe I think the Christian, uh, famous Christian Priscilla, Priscilla is a woman. She she has had many books, and I'm not sure, okay. but is is very uh, very interesting. Okay, well, I, I can I can send for for you guys. Okay, thank you, thank mm. you, and I think most of us are on Facebook. Daniel, are you on Facebook or are you not on Facebook? No, 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 I'm not. And congratulations, Daniel. Yeah, congratulations. That's very healthy. That's the spiritual <laughs> God-led thing to do. So okay, but you, you, have to, you have to ask him Instagram or, or what's up TikTok. Also. Okay, and another possibility is <laughs> no. uh, how about well, how about WhatsApp? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think everyone's on WhatsApp, right? So maybe that's easier too, if you find it there. Okay. And if, and if you need anyone's, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Daniel, are you on WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah, I have. And, uh, and then maybe, I forget, maybe we are already connected. But if not, let's get connected, Daniel, and then I'll, I'll be able to share that with you so she can share okay. it. Okay. Okay. So, I remember it now, just a really quick question. Do you have a, a book recommendation or that talks about the Hubble's law? Because I don't think there's much about it on the internet, like uh, from a Christian perspective. And when you say Hubble's law, you're, you're talking about the Big Bang? Yes, yes. When okay. he calculated uh, the distance of the galaxies. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there anything uh, that disproves his theory? Because yeah, I think it's yeah. a really good uh, argument against uh, the young earth theory. So it would be nice yeah. to, 
to know how to respond to that. It is. That, that's a good, very good subject. And what I'll do is, is actually, I might have mentioned, but I receive a, I think we uh, Jew had to go, but I, I receive an, uh, a magazine called uh, Acts and Facts. So Acts from the Book of Acts and Facts, Scientific Facts. Uh, and in fact, the founder of this institute, which is called the Institute for Creation Research, is Dr. Henry Morris, okay, uh, whose study Bible uh, uh, I use and, and I think Emily and Tiago have as well. And, and so it's a wonderful Christian organization now in Texas. Uh, and so their site uh, Emily, I'll forward their site to you. The other is that if you, you uh, read through Genesis in the study Bible, in the Henry Morris study Bible, he, he answers a lot of this. He talks, his, his, his notes are very scientist, scientific based. All right, so between those two, but I'll keep an eye out uh, for specific articles from, from Acts and Facts. I'm not aware of a um a book specifically on on that idea of and and what it's about the it's what supposedly supports the big bang because it you know they say the number of light years out there it's an expanding universe and the way they measure it it then it, it's a support for the idea of a very old earth because it's saying, oh, that for that light to get here, that would take a billion years, right? Mm -hmm. And that so that's where it seems like that supports evolution and false science, but it doesn't, mm -hmm. because there's some very good reasons why that that can be distorted, uh, and God can make things look that are far away how He wants to make them. But uh, I'll keep an eye out for it, okay? But it's a very, and what's the law again? It's called uh... Uh, the Hubble's law. Okay. And I think it's just what you said. It. I don't remember exactly, but I think it's the velocity that the galaxy is uh, getting further away times uh, the Hubble's constant. Okay, so that, that's what, and remember that the, the, uh, the spaceship with the, the, um, with the huge, uh, what's it called? Micro, no. That the it's the Hubble spaceship was named after him, and that's the one that goes up that has a it, there's no distortion uh, mm -hmm. out in outer space, and so it takes beautiful pictures of galaxies and all sorts of things. So it's the same person, um, but uh, let's uh, let's let's think about that. But that's a good question. All right, so thank you for that. So God bless you all. Uh, I'm looking yeah. forward to there'll be no more reason for sad tears. Yeah. But before that <laughs> happens, we have a lot of work to do. Okay. So a lot of encouragement, a lot of testifying, a lot of witnessing, a lot of, of uh, evangelizing. So God bless you all. I was a it was a pleasure to see you. You're on video, Daniel, if briefly. So good to see your face again. I know we met in person uh, when Deborah introduced us, but I appreciate it. You're a very good, faithful student. So God bless you all. I think I'll stay a little bit longer with Tiago uh -huh. and see you all next week. And I'm sorry uh -huh. for my uh, lateness today, but thank you for your message, uh, Emily. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. God bless Thank you. you. Bye, guys. God bless you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.